fire was in 1847, the Thursday the 16th. And it was, um, we've got a newspaper reports about it you know, within two or three days. We've got the letter that the um, minister wrote to the London Standard appealing for help the day after the fire. We've got quite a few newspaper reports because it was national news. It was around all the, um, the different newspapers around the country. Um, I'm, I'm um, involved in various clubs and things in the village here. Um, it's, it's great to be involved with them. Um, I help out at Coffee Club at the Baptist Church with Sarah and Viv. And I'm in the local history group, um, which has been finding out various things about our village. One of the reports talks about 50, um, another talks about 80 and another about 88. So quite a lot. Pretty well uh, half Needingworth was destroyed. And more than that were um, uh, lost their homes. You know, there, a lot of people panicked and moved their furniture out into the street or something, and it got looted or it got burnt. And uh, you know, I'm just talking there about 88 houses where the thatch went up in smoke, in flames. The Rose and Crown was the the pub on the corner. Um, there were there were other houses uh, that weren't affected because it was. Um, it all came from a particular cottage that got set alight and flames were blown north eastwards um, and the, 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 the thatch, the burning thatch was blown so there, was a, there were others that weren't but the only remaining thatch now is the Rose and Crown. The reports all talk about an idiot girl. The story is that she was taking out embers from the fire and there were some embers that were still live now the wind was quite strong that day and they got blown, there were some gleanings of straw because it's September so it's after the harvest um, and there were gleanings of straw which was dry and the embers sort of caught the gleanings of straw and they caught the, uh, the thatch of that cottage and that, the two, the two or three cottages in that row, they all got a light. I'm also involved with the community cafe in the village, and which is a great place for people to meet and chat. I've helped out there for the last seven years. Um, I also am involved with bell ringing, which is something I took up about 15 years ago. We ring on Sunday mornings before service, and we'll ring for weddings, which is always a lovely thing to do. We have a practice night on the last Monday of the month. Uh, we meet up with other bell ringers from nearby towers as well. And then basically what, what the, the accounts say is that the wind blew. Now the wind obviously would fan the fire but also the thatch got lifted up and blown so bits of burning thatch got blown. Now remember these, um, these cottages are quite a long way from the rest of the village so the rest of the village would, you know, okay there's a fire in one of the cottages. Fires were fairly regular but isolated, you know, one, one hayrick, one cottage. The fire hooks are interesting and there's a bit of a debate about how they were used or what they were used for because um, there is a, a, a hole, a, a loop and the metal if you look, for attaching ropes for horses. And the thought of course is, well horses wouldn't go near fire. But I think the main reason that the fire hooks were used was one to tear thatch down before fire got to it. Insurance map. It, it doesn't show all the buildings in the um, in the uh, village. It shows you uh, the buildings that were affected, and I can show you. I mean, so we've got down here is the pits cottages um, where it started, and then it it was blown, the wind blew it over here to these farms and then over to here and there's the Rosen Crown that was has, is the only house now with the thatch and then it comes over here to the... now a lot of people hid their... well not hid, they thought the malt house was safe because that was tiled, that was for malting and it was tiled and it was um, though, so people put their furniture in there, they took them out of their houses and put it in there. But that was actually destroyed itself. So, but it's coming up to affect Silver Lane, a lot of Silver Lane affected. Um, and even across the other side of the High Street, a few buildings affected. Within the village, uh, we have lots of other groups um, for everyone to join. Um, which means it's a great place to live. There's a lot of community activities going on. Um, 
and I think it, it's lovely for all age groups. You know, it's a great place for children to meet other children. You can play football, you can be in brownies or guides, you can, um, you've got the school and different events going on there. And just walking around the village itself, you know, you meet up with people who you've perhaps met at a quiz night or you've met in a club. Um, and if there's any big events, then the village will pull together. We've had things like the Millennium uh, celebrations for that, uh, the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee, we had big events going on for that. And it's just great that the whole village pulls together. Um, I think Needingworth's quite a family-friendly village, actually. In fact, there's actually very few houses that come on the market. Very, very popular. People stay here for years. Um, and one of the reasons for that, I think, is there's so many activities and facilities for, for people. First of all, you've got two playgroups in the village. So when mums have their babies, they've got somewhere to, to go and to meet new people. And I run one of the playgroups in the village and have done for 10 years, and it's, it's very successful. Um, then there's a very, very good preschool, which has had some outstanding inspections. Um, and then the kids will move on to primary. So we're lucky to have a primary school in the village because that's a bit of a hub for village life. I think the only problem that I would say with Needingworth is um, public transport, which is probably true of a lot of villages nowadays. The, uh, the buses um, have been reduced over the last few years. And we had to campaign to actually keep a bus on a Saturday down to St Ives. OK, this is one of the books about uh, Halliwell and Needingworth by Joe Newell, who died recently. Uh, lovely books. We've still got a, one of the picture books available if anybody wants to buy one. But this has got a chapter on the Great Fire at Needingworth and a letter from the Reverend McGee to the parishioners. And I'm not sure um, when he wrote it, but he says... Um, it was a calm and lovely evening and I was in the village about seven o'clock, but then apparently he was in London on the day it happened. Mm. But there's a lovely paragraph here. The, I just love the language. Here's, um, it's impossible adequately to describe the scene. The fury of the flames, raging of the storm and the terror and dismay on every countenance. Fire engines were useless. The wind blew their jets of water spray before they could reach the spot to which they were directed. The poor men who'd gone out to labour, instead of returning to their dinner, only came to behold their cottages in flames or in ruins. Because it happened during the day, of course, when the men were yeah. out working. Um, some who had gone out to see their friends at a little distance, as they came back, beheld a village on fire and ran with trembling hearts, not knowing whether their house had fallen in the general ruin or were long unable to pass through the dense, impenetrable mass of strangers of all classes who in the course of two hours had collected in the village. And of course that was news spread quickly, people came to uh, gawp and some even came to help. The shop is another good place to, it's a good thing to have in the village as you can also meet people there ch chatting to the people in the shop themselves. The post office is great to have in the village and uh, as well as the village hall which is another big centre, the village hall and village green. You've got lots of things going on there each week. When people do arrive in the new village, they get given a pack that includes our newsletter for the village, which is also very successful and has won some awards. Um, and in there, you can see just how many companies, as well as activities, are available. So I think, all in all, it's actually a very good village. It's not necessarily picturesque, but it has everything you'd want in the way of social life. We talked of moving out of Needingworth at one point, but we've just got good friends here, so we'll stay.